Hello, I am Carrie Ann Edwards, trustee of Technology for Youth, a technology enrichment program that provides young learners with the skills needed to code and prepare for future careers in technology. We are here with CEO and founder of Boaz Bikes, Emil Nani, and CFO Corey Smith. They are here to talk to us about Boaz Bikes, a company providing a safer solution in the first and last mile transportation industry. So welcome, Emil and Corey. You briefly tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into Boaz. My name is Emil, a serial entrepreneur. Since the age of 17, I've been building companies, starting companies, made a lot of mistakes, learning a lot. Um, I'm from North Carolina. I'm a husband, father, a believer. Whenever I find a problem that I believe needs to be fixed, I just dive deep into it. So that's who I am, a hardworking person. What about you, Corey? I like that. Uh, I'm from upstate New York, from Woodstock, New York. I started in investment management, worked there in it, constructing portfolios for institutional and private wealth clients for a few years. It took me a while to get a more entrepreneurial view. I worked for larger companies, then worked in corporate finance, M&A, and the valuation business modeling group at EY. It's always a journey, right? You're, t- you're learning about yourself as you go. And I was thinking, you know, I want to have more of an impact on companies. I want a little more freedom, a little more say so. So I started working more with smaller companies, helping them to grow, helping them to create complex financial models to get funding and helping them to also scale as an operator as well. That's what I've been doing more recently. As Emil said, I love problem solving. I just love problems. I love and I love to figure things out and look back and say, all right, I was either right or wrong, but I'm, I'm willing to put it on the line and see how good I am. Wow, that's that is great. So you guys were actually pretty successful before Boaz came into existence. So my first question to you is author Jessamine West said talent is helpful in writing but guts are absolutely necessary. So tell us what made you decide to enter a field that you had no experience or little to no experience in after already building successful careers? I went the traditional route. You know, I have an undergrad degree from USC Chapel Hill, grad degree, uh, Warren MBA. And the farther you go in a direction, the harder it is to pull back. These expectations that someone who does this should be here at this point in time. I call those the golden handcuffs, Corey. Yeah, they're gold plated, baby. But yeah, I, I know them all too well all time. And I think the moment, you know, I was always thinking about it, of getting out of that direction. But when I had my first daughter, I have two daughters, one seven-year-old now, Jade and Jordan. When I saw my personality in them, you know, out of the womb, like they're kind of a little attitude, a little defined, very, you know, very creative and kind of free people. And I'm like, oh, I'm fighting nature at that point. Like I, I realized that I'm trying to conform to something that is not natural to me. And that's kind of when I took that step, which was tough, you know, having kids and taking huge hits in income. You know, I was on a certain path, but once I saw myself in them, I was like, I I don't have a choice. I gotta start moving in this direction. You sound like you've always been thinking about it, but then you were kind of like, but I, I don't know, I'm making all this good money in corporate America right now. Maybe this is not what I'm supposed to be doing, but then you're thinking, well, I have good ideas or I have a specific skill set that can actually work, right? In terms of being able to, to build out um, an entrepreneurial business, a startup. It seems like you come from two different sort of places, right? When you guys, so how did you guys get together? On that first transportation startup, they taught me a lot. And to me, you know, I built that startup and you know, we, were, we were profitable. We weren't making a lot of money, but we were profitable. I thought that was a great achievement for me, but I learned a lot. And the biggest thing I learned in that startup was you need a team in order to build out something amazing and, and great. A team is going to help. So I reached out to Corey, and this is like 2018. So I reached out to Corey. <laughs> he, he had this phenomenal background. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna pitch this dude and tell him, like, you know, this is what I want to. This is what I want to do. And I got these, I got these big dreams, and we're gonna grow this company to a billion dollar company, and we're gonna, we're gonna take over. And there's so much innovation and so much vision. And my thing was, if I just pitch it to him, and if he can just see a glimpse of what I see. He'll jump on board, and I think we talked twice, and then, you know, I was sending him over a contract to join the team. Corey, did he do a good pitch? Yeah, I'm here. I'm still here. I mean... (laughs) (laughs) So Bird was the first in the micro-mobility space, and then Jump, which was effectively Uber. But Lime then came and crushed both companies to gain the most market share. 
Most would say due to technological advances. What will Boaz do technologically to gain market share and set itself apart from the competition? In my opinion, the only reason why Lime has you know, catapulted itself to that number one spot is because they are right now the, the most aggressive. But we do have a, our Model 3 vehicle. So we were ahead of the curve. Our Model 2, which is a, the seated scooter that's, that's already out in the market now, you know, we were the first to introduce the seated scooter, the swappable batteries, which is how we crush our operations on the operation costs. We were the first ones, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're still the only ones that put turn signals on our scooters. And now we've designed this Model 3 vehicle that's uh, currently patent pending that we believe is going to be the game changer in the scooter industries. We believe when we roll out that Model 3 uh, later 2021, that is off to the moon with it. Um, Can you give us some Marvel. secrets? What is the what is making the Model Three stand out? Give me some secrets. Just one, <laughs> one secret. I don't know. <laughs> 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 All right, let me let me see. Let me, let me give let me give you one 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 secret. So our Model Three does come with a smart helmet, and it, the Model Three does come with sanitation wipes. And this was before COVID even hit when we designed this. We're all about promoting safety. But the camera on the smart helmet, it, you're able to go back in our system and download footage. It's a whole new revenue stream that we're opening up. And that's just a little bit of what we're doing, you know, something that none of our competitors are, are doing yet. Um, thank you for sharing that secret with us about the helmet. <laughs> um, so let's get into ESG, okay? Environment, social, and governance. So that has become the new framework for many investors looking to get exposure to a whole host of industries. I think this is mainly due to these companies proving out performance in the long term. So like we think of companies like, say, Etsy, for instance. So how does your company stack up when it comes to ESG? I would say just without giving out secrets, but with the focus on certain communities, right? Like I think we think there's opportunities there, especially dealing with some B2B plays within our community and some institutions there. And, you know, we definitely have that focus going and it's definitely on our radar. When I looked at some of the chatter around Boaz, your C-suite is all minority and female. Who's running the company? You know, is it diverse, right? Are, are there opportunities for women to be a part of the executive level of the organization? And you guys are definitely showing that. So I think that you guys actually hit the E, the S, and the G, which is not something that most companies do. So that's pretty awesome. Hopefully you guys can grow that out and do really well. So now let's talk about numbers, Corey, and your financials. So for investors interested in getting in on the action, give us your bottom line projection. Projection, so for 2000, we'll start with 2021. So, you know, we're running multiple scenarios right now, right? But I'll give you the base tape, right? We're just gonna go in and dominate Detroit, you know, probably go into three or four uh, new cities. We're looking at getting to reasonably 15 million in revenue, given, you know, given our funding, funding targets next year and definitely being profitable in our target city now we only had 35 bikes out of 2020 and the direct margin was almost 20 percent right like so even so wow. it's really just scaling the operation right that's really the only thing we need the money for i think in some ways having less helped us create a an operation that can run lean right so we could probably go into places that other competitors can go and be profitable so we're just looking to scale it up how many full-time employees do you guys currently have yeah, so we're looking at six six of us as full time, about seven seven part time. You guys are doing a lot with under ten employees. All right, so what else should we know about Boaz Bikes we haven't talked about today? We do have a, a public crowd fund, and that goes back to what we're trying to do within the community, getting people on board with these early stage startups that have the potential to explode like Boaz. I don't want to toss any any numbers up there of where. I plan to see Boaz go, but um, just getting in on the ground level, getting in on the ground level as an investor, that's why we partner with WeFunder, where people can invest as little as $100, make that investment, and hopefully, you know, in a year or two, it could be worth, you know, a, a, a hundred, a hundredfold. That is pretty awesome. I am so excited about, you know, for you guys, to fundraise. 
just reiterate your point that if you're going to get in now, I think it's for any investors, this is the best time to get in. And then now I want to just have a little fun with you guys. We're going to do a little rapid fire round. You guys can only answer with one word. When are you most productive? Morning. Morning. Besides your cell phone, one item you can't live without. My laptop. <laughs> okay. I'll give you that one. Fishing rod. We have to talk about that. Okay. Strangest thing you've ever eaten. <laughs> uh, <laughs> frog legs. A loop. A partially formed egg. A oh. Duck that's in a certain stage of development that it, I may not want to go into detail. But. Oh. Okay. It wasn't good. <laughs> the flavor wise, texture was a problem. It was a problem, but it tastes pretty good. Okay. Okay. Cold climate or warm climate? Warm. Warm. One word you would add to the dictionary. Boaz. Wait, is that is that going to be a verb? <laughs> a noun. <laughs> noun. <laughs> noun, okay. Tori? Um, man, that was a good one. What did you say? I'm going to cop, I'm copying a little. I'm going to say Boaz, <laughs> and it's one word. You better say, you better say Boaz. <laughs> <laughs> You should say Boaz the verb. And then you are Boaz on the bike. I know, you were just telling me. Okay, bail, Baylor Bears or North Carolina Tar Heels? Tar Heels. <laughs> no, you're not waiting for that. Tar Heels, of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Well, this was so good. It was so nice talking to you guys. Again, I'm Carrie Ann Edwards, and we are here with Emil Nani and Corey Smith from Boaz Fight. One of our main guiding principles at Technology for Youth is connecting our young people with the skills required to compete in the future generation of work. We want our youth using technology to solve problems unique to them and their community. And furthermore, we love to identify companies that can serve as role models in this aim. And I believe we have with Boaz Fight. You know, we're so excited for you. We wish you the best of luck in your fundraise and in the life cycle of this amazing company, Boaz Bikes. And we are looking forward to seeing you do great, great things 